Covenant kids, we're so glad that you're here with us today. Let's stand up and worship God together. Everything that I need for this day 
of my feet I will not fear, I will not be shaken You hold everything No, I will not fear, I will not be shaken You hold everything I can count on all of the promises my God promised me He will never let go and He will never forsake me Treasured by the one who loves me. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. I am treasured, treasured, treasured by the one who loves me. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. I am treasured, treasured, treasured by the one who loves me. I am treasured, treasured, treasured by the one who loves me. Promises, hey, I can count on all of the promises my God promised me. He will never let go and he will never forsake me. He knows everything that I need for this day. He knows every thought and he knows me by my name. friend tell you that they saw someone famous? Maybe it was Taylor Swift they saw at the mall or Michael Jordan at the ballpark. Would you believe them? Sometimes it's hard to believe something is true when you don't see it yourself. Today in God's big story, we're going to see how one follower of Jesus discovered that Jesus had really risen from the dead. Let's watch. Has anyone ever told you something so unbelievable that you just knew it wasn't true? One time, my friend told me she saw a movie star at the grocery store. What if the news was even harder to believe than that? And what if it was actually true? <gasps> so who's this story about? A famous fashion icon? An artist? Oh, a sports hero. No, <laughs> you're all so cold. It's about Jesus, isn't it? Yes. Knew it. Jesus lives. It's also about one of his disciples, Thomas. But to tell this story, first, I should mention Isaiah. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. He's like another disciple? Good question. Uh, no. Isaiah was a wise prophet who lived way before Jesus was born. Very wise. So, he made a lot of money? No, <laughs> he didn't make a prophet. He was a prophet. That means he was a messenger for God. This dude was an all-star. 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah told everyone that Jesus, the Son of God, was coming. And when Jesus was born, that meant people finally got to see God in person because Jesus is God. Wait, I don't follow. Why would God become human? To show the world how much he loves them. One way Jesus showed that love was by teaching his 12 disciples to love everyone around them. Oh, so he only had like 12 followers? No way! Jesus had tons of people who followed him. But only 12 were extra close with him. Having 12 disciples was significant. There are 12 disciples because Israel is God's special nation. It was made up of 12 tribes. 
12 and 12. Get it? <laughs> but at this point in the story, 10 of those tribes are gone. It was like they had been eliminated from a competition. By picking 12 disciples, Jesus was showing that he was going to restore Israel. All 12 tribes back on the field. Jesus loves us all so much that he died as a sacrifice for our sins. Now everyone gets a chance to have a new life, even people who have rejected God and done wrong things. It's like getting a do-over. It's like being born again, ha <laughs> ha. When Jesus died, People thought that was the end of the game. They didn't know God was gonna raise him from the dead. But his disciples knew, right? It was actually hard for them to believe too. One day, after Jesus had died, they were all together in a locked room and Jesus showed up. He was alive! Jesus lives. They didn't know what to think. They probably thought he was like a ghost or something. But Jesus said, may peace be with you. Then he showed them that it was really him. If they were scared before, they weren't anymore. It's like they were pumped to see their coach again. Then Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. The power of the Holy Spirit is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I thought the story was about Thomas. Was he with the disciples? Thomas must have been right in the bench because he wasn't in the game that day. Then when the other disciples told him what happened, he didn't believe them. He told them he wouldn't believe unless he could touch the wounds Jesus got when he died. Fast forward to more than a week later. The disciples are all together in a locked room again. But this time, Thomas was there too. And guess what? Jesus appeared to them again. And he knew exactly what Thomas was thinking. He told Thomas to come touch his scars and know for sure that he was really Jesus. So Thomas believed, right? 100%. Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. That's us. We're the ones that Jesus is talking about. We weren't around back then to see Jesus and touch his scars, but we can still believe. We can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit just like his disciples. Oh, the Holy Spirit helps us believe. With the Holy Spirit, we can know that God's word is true and that Jesus is risen, even though we weren't there. Awesome! All right, Covenant kids, it's time for our word of wonder. Are you guys ready to memorize this Bible verse? Okay, first I'm gonna read it to you and then you guys will copy after me after that. Okay, it goes like this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Romans 12, two. Okay. I'm gonna say a little bit at a time and I want you guys to copy after me, all right? It starts like this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Romans 12, two. Great job, guys. Thomas was one of Jesus' disciples. Along with the other disciples, Thomas knew Jesus really well. When Jesus came to earth, people got to see God with their eyes, hear God with their ears, and even touch God with their hands. Jesus came from heaven to show God's love. That may be hard to believe. One way Jesus showed God's love was by calling 12 disciples and teaching them to share his love with everyone. The disciples went everywhere with Jesus. They heard his voice when he taught. They tasted food alongside of him as they shared meals. Can you imagine what it would have been like to taste the fish and the loaves that Jesus multiplied? The disciples saw Jesus do incredible miracles like walking on water and healing the sick. 
You can also imagine that the disciples maybe got to feel Jesus' hugs, and maybe they even smelled his feet after a long, hot day in the wilderness. But Jesus' main mission was to die for everyone's sins. This is the reason that he came to earth. Nobody seemed to understand that Jesus was going to die, and nobody guessed that God would raise him from the dead. On the day Jesus rose from the dead, most of the disciples were together in a locked room. The disciples didn't know what to think about all that had happened, but then suddenly Jesus was with them in the room. They probably thought they were seeing a ghost and were scared, but Jesus said, peace be with you. And he let them see that he was real and he breathed on them and told them to receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus was giving them the Spirit who had raised him from the dead. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God with the followers of Jesus. But Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, wasn't in the room that day. So he didn't get to see and touch Jesus or receive the Holy Spirit. Thomas couldn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead and was alive because he hadn't seen it himself. So Thomas said to the others, first I must see the nail marks on his hands and I want to put my fingers where the nails were. I want to put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe. More than a week later, the disciples were together again in the locked room and again Jesus appeared to them and he seemed to know exactly what Thomas was thinking. And Jesus told Thomas to come and touch the scars in his hands to know for certain that he was alive. So Thomas touched the nail scars in Jesus' hands, and he believed. Jesus gave Thomas exactly what Thomas needed to believe. Then Jesus said, because you've seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen me and have still believed. These words Jesus spoke are about you and me. We weren't around to see Jesus and to touch the scars in his hands. We can't know Jesus with our five senses in the same way that the disciples did. But every believer of Jesus receives the same gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave his disciples. The Spirit shows us that God's word is true and we can believe that Jesus is alive. The Holy Spirit is his presence with us to help us and to strengthen us. The Holy Spirit helps us believe. All right, Covenant kids, God knows you, God loves you, and God leads you. Now go change your world.